Are you saying that you can see that there are fundamental differences between um, highly melanated people and people who are melanin recessive or not as melanin full as others? Yeah, I think everyone can see it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, you're going to touch it, you touch it. Yeah, it's me. Man, it's your wow. boy. Hmm. Yeah, it's like it's that. Right. Yeah, they, what you're touching on right here is a hundred percent pure uncut melanin. Yeah, it's like that. You like said that. melanin. No, no, oh, I, it, I was I born like this that. way. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah I came like that. Yeah, for real. Look at this. No batteries needed. Yeah, y'all see it? Yeah, it's nice to meet y'all too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go on. Everyone can see it. Everyone sees the difference. It's just that. We're taught to not see color and not see differences. So when children who are just very logical, they just see a difference, they're told not to see it. And then they kind of suppress it and then don't say anything as they get older. When I was at school, um, one of my friends, again, when children are at school and they're just being logical, they just say obvious things. So um, one of my white friends, he was like, why is it always the black kids are the fastest? It's what he said at school. It's like, why are you guys always the fastest? Why are you guys going to always jump the highest? And back at school, it was obvious, but no one knew the science behind it. So everyone would be like, oh, you can't say that, man. But he's like, no, any school you go to, it's like the, the black kids are the fastest. They can run the fastest and jump the highest. Why is that? When we're children, we want to know why. When we get older, we're told not to ask why. We're told not to use logic. And that's why I love teaching children science because children find it very easy to understand because all you're doing, my definition of science is logic backed up by evidence. All you're doing is using logic and then backing up your logic, your common sense with proof. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so really, before we even get into what are those differences, what is melanin? I think Dr. Leila Africa said it best. He said that melanin is the chemical key to life. Melanin is the chemical key to life. There is nothing else to study in science but melanin. We call it chemi, which means black. The people who study melanin particles call what they're studying, the scientists call chemistry what you call chemistry, the study of melanin particles that go around in the orbit, and we call them electrons, photons, solitons. Those are melanin particles. That's why we call it chemistry. And the country you come from is called Kemet, which some people call Egypt. There is nothing else to study but melanin. And if you study chemistry or heard of chemistry and haven't heard the word melanin, you have just been studying social science. Now in science, um, there's a lot of confusing jargon. I mentioned that in my book, like the way most people don't like science because of the confusing jargon around it. They like to use big words. They like to use confusing words. Instead of using a word that everyone would understand, they'll just make up some scientific term, um, probably in Latin, because um, Latin tends to be the, the, the language of science. So no one can understand it. And that is by design. It keeps the lay people out of the know and that sort of stuff. So if you type in what is melanin into your search engine, you're going to come up with various definitions. They're going to tell you that it's a biopolymer. Some are going to tell you it's a biochrome. It's a polypigment. It's a poly this. It's a bio that. No one understands any of those words. But if I was to say to you, melanin is the chemical key to life, Everyone, including your children, understand that. That means no melanin, no life. Right. Simple as that. Wow. So that's, that's pretty profound. No melanin, no life. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then why is it the key to life? What is it about, what is it that melanin actually does? because uh, I listened to one of your um, presentations in preparation for this, and I thought it was really interesting when you talk about how scientists up until today, they, they either dance around or they fudge around um, the subject. And I, it made me think of when I went to school. When I went to school, we learned that melanin 
uh, makes your skin go darker when the sun comes out and that was it mm -hmm. so <laughs> uh, how is it that it is the key to life well that's a good question and the answer lies in what it does with water <laughs> and i don't really want to reveal that that's that's going a bit deep with the science but i do reveal that in my debut book plug plug <laughs> the hidden science of melanin so i do reveal what melanin does with water so that will blow people's minds away but just to give you a little insight into it i always mm -hmm. say that melanin is um like similar to chlorophyll now, this will show you how important melanin is. Every child in every school, li literally every school, they teach you about photosynthesis. Yes. And what is photosynthesis? That's when the green plants, the leaves, they absorb sunlight. How do they do that? Because of a green pigment called chlorophyll. It absorbs the sunlight. And then in the presence of you know, sunlight, um, carbon dioxide and water, it produces a chemical reaction inside of the plant that um results in the plant having food which is glucose and then the plant um releasing oxygen the mm -hmm. oxygen is the byproduct and it releases it into the air and then what what do we as humans do we uh breathe in that oxygen yeah and what's interesting in is what's interesting is we breathe out carbon dioxide so what they breathe out we breathe in and what we breathe out they breathe in mm -hmm. so there's kind of like a symbiotic relationship between us and plants but that shows you how important chlorophyll is to life, literally to every plant, chlorophyll, photosynthesis. Without photosynthesis, there would be no plant life. Yeah. Now, use that analogy and apply it to melanin. Without melanin, there'd be no human life. It's literally, there's a similar um, process. Now, mm -hmm. there is a, a scientist that says that um, he calls melanin the human photosynthesis. He says that melanin can do photosynthesis. That's untrue. Melanin cannot do photosynthesis. Melanin is no, melanin doesn't do exactly the same as plants. Melanin is photovoltaic. And what that means is it takes light from the sun and then convert it into voltage. Photo means light, voltaic means voltage. So melanin is photovoltaic. It takes light and converts it into voltage. What's voltage? Electricity. What's voltage? Electricity, yeah. energy. So without that electricity, without that energy, there is no life. Mm. So is it is it the amount of melanin also has something to do with the amount of electricity, energy that we have? Well, there's or different types. Okay, right. Yeah. And what are the, what are the different types? So there's different types of skin melanin and then there's a brain type of melanin as well. And there's melanin in plants as well. There's all different types. But if we're talking about human beings, we're talking about two main types, pheomelanin and eumelanin, and then one brain type, which is called neuromelanin. Everyone has neuromelanin. It's the black substance in your brain. What they don't tell you is that every, well, melanated human beings have 12 melanin centers in their brain. Now, I've been to university, I've studied science. I know an, a lot of my students who have been, who have studied neurology, they studied neuroscience. They've never heard of these 12 melanin centers. Yeah. Never heard. But never. Dr. Leila Africa talks about them. Dr. Richard King talks about them. Um, Dr. T. Owens Moore talks about them. 12 melanin centers. And I, I break them down in my book. I've actually got illustrations of where they are in the brain. One of them is called Substantia Nigra. Mm. And just, just the sound of that, you should be able to understand what it means. Substantia yes. nigra. Yeah. Yes. yes. Substantial black. Substance. black. Yes. Yeah. Substantial amount of blackness. There's a yes. substantial yes. amount of blackness in your brain and they call it substantia nigra. And when that, um, that literally controls our motor function, how we move. So if that starts to degrade or, you know, fade or something happens to your substantia nigra, you'll start to suffer from neurological diseases like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. And this is very well um, researched and published. 
like everything in my book I've, I've referenced from published papers, scientific papers and that sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. They understand this substantial Negro thing because of Alzheimer's and Parkinson's and all of these neurological diseases. They found that the people that suffer from these things, they're lacking in substant- substantial Negro in the brain. Yeah. But that's mm-hmm. everyone. Everyone's got the substantial Negro. Everyone's got neuromelanin. Where mm-hmm. we differ is the skin type of melanin, which is eumelanin, which mm-hmm. comes in black and brown, and pheomelanin, which comes in red and yellow. Mm-hmm. And through my research, what I've found is the black and brown type, it's a better absorber of light. Mm-hmm. And remember, melanin is photovoltaic. Mm-hmm. So the more light that melanin can absorb, the more voltage, the more voltaic, the more energy. Mm-hmm. And then um, the pheomelanin comes in red and yellow. So red hair, blonde hair, paler skin, that's not a great absorber of light. This is not my opinion. This is just science. Yes. Hence the reason why people who have high amounts of pheomelanin, when they go out in the sun, they're more susceptible to skin cancer and all that sort of stuff. Yes. Because their melanin doesn't absorb ultraviolet light right. like ours does. Right, right, right. So that's the biggest main difference. Right. And so...